This is the Begin Within podcast, where we believe real, lasting health and fitness requires you to start inside before you work out. I'm your host, Nate Slegger, and I'm here to show you behind the scenes of fitness. You already know exercise is good for you, but what about all the other things in life that affect your fitness? If you're looking for extra motivation to get started or to make sure you keep going, this is the place for you. Produced by BeginWithin.fit So often here on this show, we talk about the power of making little changes. In fact, I recently dealt with that in the bonus episode that was just released two days ago on a Tuesday. We talked about the power of making small little changes. And if that makes sense to you, if really taking this fitness and weight loss and health improvement process one step at a time and using the power of habits to make permanent changes. If that makes sense for you, I want to tell you about our coaching program that is currently open for enrollment. You can get started at beginwithin.fit slash coaching. You can learn all about the program there, but what you are going to see is that you're going to get a new habit every week or two for as long as you'd like to stay in the program up to the next 52 weeks, 52 weeks of habits that we teach you in the program that are going to absolutely positively impact your health and wellness. And they are little things, little things that we found are truly game changers for the clients that we work with at Begin Within Fitness. You're also going to get access to a live coaching session with me. It's a group coaching session. We do one every single Monday. We vary the time each week so that as many clients as possible can join us at some point during the month. If you can come to each and every week's coaching session, we welcome it. We'd love to have you there. That is included with our coaching program. Two of the big aspects of that program, there's so much more, including um, regular daily access to your coach that you get as part of our coaching program. Uh, if you want to do the monthly pay, it's 37 bucks a month, just 37 bucks a month for uh, that and more. Check it out at beginwithin.fit slash coaching. Now let's get into our episode today. I have a really cool interview with the founder of a company called Life Fuel. That's L Y F E F U E L. His name is Chris Mandarino. Perhaps that sounds familiar to you if you are an NFL fan. He was a fullback for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's talking about lessons that he learned from living in the blue zones. The blue zones, that's regions of the world where people commonly live active lives past the age of 100. He was able to live there and study, you know, explore, take a look at what it was that made such a difference in the lives of the people that were there. Uh, We talk about the big lessons that he learned as well as the things that he's taken back with him now in his life back in the United States. We'll also talk about his company, and he's got a really cool offer for you as well if you stick around to the end. I hope you enjoy my interview with Chris Mandarino. Kind of have to rewind, I guess, all the way back to my post-NFL transition. I had the opportunity to um, go abroad and play football in Italy after uh, playing in the NFL. So uh, that's, you know, I said if the NFL didn't work out, uh, I'd love to be able to use football to go travel and, and kind of do that. And um, I had a former teammate from Cal that called me up and, um, you know, just 
she had a former high school coach who's coaching football in Bologna. And I was like, do they even have football in Italy? Are we talking soccer, American football? He's like, yeah, they've got it. There's a great novel by John Grisham called Plan for Pizza, which is uh, almost identical to the life I lived uh, yeah. during that time in, in Italy. Great read, uh, great book. But, you know, that was my first taste of Italian culture. And that really opened my eyes to kind of the stark contrast between, you know, how they really live on a day-to-day -day routine and, and kind of uh, what we do here in the U.S. Um, flash forward to most recently, um, you know, I've lived this would be my third time living in Italy, and this time is in Sardinia, which is known as one of the world's foremost blue zones, and kind of arrived there after having been traveling the world for basically three years, kind of living, working abroad, and, and not just traveling, but really living in uh, these places. You know, we found to uh, my wife and I, when we were living, you know, at least a month to three months, and, and if not more, we could really get kind of rooted in the culture and, and like establish our kind of daily routines um, instead of just kind of taking the tourists and round and running around. Sure. So we had uh, we had left the states back in uh, the beginning of 2019. We uh, my wife was going through the green card process here in the U.S. Uh, and we were planning a wedding celebration down in Brazil, where she's from. And so we kind of planned planned everything sight unseen. Uh, we moved out of our place here in Orange County, and when we went down for the wedding we didn't have any plans after the wedding but in route to get down there um the flight attendant gave me a hard time about and wouldn't let me on the flight because i didn't have a flight leaving brazil i just bought a one-way ticket hmm. and so it kind of forced my hand into like <laughs> doing something that we had casually spoke about doing and it was kind of like oh we'd love to like travel the world and i kind of even sent my wife like a fictitious around the world itinerary that touched on a bunch of different spots and in Portugal was one of those places on the list. And so when I pulled up Google flights in the middle of the airport, Portugal was like the cheapest place in the world to fly uh, two months down the road. So went down to Brazil, stayed two months there. And then we're off to Portugal, um, which is what was like the first step on our journey. And we lived in, in Portugal for a couple months. And then we um, just kind of kept taking that strategy. So we let like cheap airfare and Airbnbs guide our travels essentially. And, you know, we were in Portugal and then we went to Bordeaux, France, and we passed through a few spots in um, the South of Italy. We was able to go back to my great grandfather's, uh, birth town and as well as she has Italian ancestry as well um, and we had both individually started a dual citizenship process um, before we had even met so it was like what motivated me to start it was trying to play for the Italian national football team I would need my you know Italian passport to be able to do that and then she just had kind of pursued it on her own um, just to kind of reconnect that familial link um, so we laid some, like got some of the important documents at that time. Our dream was to get to Bali for our honeymoon. So eventually after Italy, we did like the Greek islands and then made it to Bali and we're living in Bali for a couple months and we're having such a great time that, you know, I was looking at Australia and then Australia seemed like two Western eyes. And so we just kept going and we stayed in Southeast Asia for a while longer. We went to Thailand and then Vietnam and that's when COVID hit. And so we're trying to get out of Asia. We circled back through to Thailand, Australia, and then New Zealand. And we got in New Zealand probably two weeks before they shut down the borders, closed, like canceled our flights and all these things. Okay. So we were stuck in New Zealand for a year. There was uh, basically a circumstance where she couldn't, they, they revoked my wife's green, uh, green card status. So she couldn't legally get back to the US. I couldn't go to Brazil. And so there was kind of this instant where, you know, we can go anywhere on the planet. If it wasn't for New Zealand at the time, because uh, we didn't have a shared passport. And so after the experience of living in New Zealand, which was incredible, um, that really motivated us to get the dual citizenship through the Italian bloodline. The easiest way to do that is by going and setting up residency and, and really living there. And um, that's when we were living in Sardinia for the past year or so um, to be able to kind of go through that process. So, Oh, my goodness. Wow. That is a, <laughs> that is a journey in every sense of the word, man. Yeah. Uh, could you, um, 
touch just briefly you use that phrase the blue zones just in case someone listening isn't you know familiar with with what that means just what what's the idea with the blue so the blue zones, zones um, is a study that they did uh, that looked at different pockets of the world where there's an abnormally higher number of centenarians, people that live uh, a high quality of life well into their hundreds and beyond. So average lifespan in most, most places that varies across the board, but in these unique pockets, I think there's seven or eight spots around the world where they've um, basically said, okay, why is there more centenarians here than other places. And then they started to study those places and looked at kind of a shared set of attributes or uh, lifestyle components, dietary components that they said kind of contribute to a high quality long life. Um, and so, you know, part of that is, you know, community, it's kind of uh, uh, spirituality, it's diet, nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, kind of all these different kind of components that they saw, uh, the shared characteristics, you know, in spite of being in, you know, complete different cultures, different parts of the world, which uh, contributed to kind of the result of that, that longer lifespan. Nice. Thank you. So as you were there, I'm curious, um, what were some of the, the, at least from your perspective, the biggest lessons that you learned in terms of like the contrast between what what we're typically doing lifestyle wise in the United States versus what you saw happening and what you got to experience there. Yeah. So I was, there's a few things that really stood out to me. So it's um, generally a slower pace of life, you know, being more present, more mindful in your, you know, current circumstances, really taking time to, uh, sit down at the dinner table, be with friends and family, be very mindful about, you know, um, where your time spent in that strong sense of community. Um, from a food and nutrition standpoint, uh, especially in Sardinia, they were very prideful and, and made it a point to source locally. Um, and so that's where, you know, kind of more, we would go to some of the farmers markets, the local producers and all that. Um, it really opened our eyes to kind of how much, uh, you know, uh, priority went into that, you know, food isn't traveling, you know, halfway around the world mm -hmm. to get there, right. It's grown locally and in Sardinia, they're able to produce a lot of what they consume, you know, on the Island itself. Um, and so as a result of that, you know, you're getting way less of the chemicals and pesticides and all the kind of garbage that ends up in the majority of our, our food. Um, you're a lot less reliant uh, on ultra processed foods, which, you know, most people have become staples of most people's diets here in the U.S. Right. Um, you know, Italians love to cook. It's still like a central part of um what they do you know like it's not this fast food drive-through culture like that's not food at the end of the day um so you know learning how to cook if you don't <laughs> know already is such a valuable skill set to achieving you know health and wellness goals but that was a big part of it uh, i think the way that european cities are designed they're just uh, a lot more commuter friendly so way uh, you just see people walking a lot more. You've got the 90 year old grandmothers who are going to the grocery store every single day, pretty much to get fresh food, right? It's not, I'm doing grocery shopping once every two weeks and it's all, you know, sitting in the pantry. No, I'm going to the the local butcher. I'm going to a local, you know, uh, farmer's market, the local, and they still have a lot of those small independent specialized businesses and not the major supermarket Costco, you know, culture that, you know, we've adapted here in the U S. Um, and then there's kind of the, I guess the more subtle things there was, uh, what's known as the passeggiata. So I was just going for like a leisurely stroll. And what's, what was crazy to see is, you know, uh, like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the evening after, you know, everybody's had, um, uh, dinner or whatever, you'll see hundreds or thousands of people just out walking, you know, you're walking and talking with family and, and or, or even by yourself. And that was, you know, really, really cool. And it didn't like a lot of different cities around Sardinia that we went to, there was just like this thing of this, the, the passeggiata. So um, that was really unique. And then um, going back to kind of the slower pace of life, like siesta is still a thing there. And so like the entire city will shut down from two to 
five o'clock and they, they're carving out that time again to go home, be with family, have a, a proper meal, a proper lunch, and then kind of revisit work if necessary or, or whatever. So it's just, you know, a lot of, you know, cultural differences um, that contrast against like the go, 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 like burn it on both ends mentality that we largely have here. And, and again, around the food, um, still a lot of pride uh, and, and knowledge around like where it's coming from and, it, you know, locally sourced ingredients. Yeah. Wow. It, it makes me think of uh, sometimes as you were describing it, it sounds like kind of like, old world and you know not as advanced but the reality is like the advances haven't been all that healthy <laughs> right? right so yeah how, how did you how did you feel like what i'm just curious like what kind of shift did you start to feel as you got into that type of lifestyle um what did, what so it's very challenging at first you know going from like an americanized like way of living and just yeah. like everything on demand, you know, um, it, to, you know, not having that necessarily. And so at first, you know, it, it can be tough to manage, but once you really sink in to it, um, you know, you, a lot of like, just like stress that you might not be as in tune with, like kind of living here starts to dissipate and you just, strangely you you feel like you've got a lot more time on your hands um uh, because of the slower pace of life um uh, but it's not like there's any <laughs> less amount of stuff to do right um but i just feel like the the time spent feels like it's more in depth more you're, you're more present in a lot of the situations as opposed to trying to like rush on to the next thing or squeeze you know every ounce out of you know the day in terms of like a checklist or something yeah well what i'm curious and i know you said that uh that right now you're in the united states um yeah. how much of that has been able to stay with you are, are there any like lessons that you've been able to kind of hang on to and and still have present in in your life to some extent um I would love to say that I still take like my siesta from two to four every day. <laughs> I want that too. <laughs> uh, that's not true. Uh, but I, I've been very protective around my morning routine. That's really kind of my selfish time. And like, um, you know, I'm fortunate to be running a business and kind of, uh, a lot, you know, don't take calls or do stuff until like I've had adequate amount of time to start my day, move my body nourish myself and then kind of jump into my, my work day. I know not everybody, you know, has that flexibility. That's what's working for me is just like making sure I'm getting kind of my movement based practice, my uh, mental work in and all this stuff to start my day. So that's been really, really helpful for me. Um, we're very lucky, you know, the community that we live in um, being back now, there's a lot of like different activities that we've intentionally kind of started to seek out. I've been using, you know, um, sites like Eventbrite just to see what's going on locally and do things like, you know, go on a wellness hike that somebody organized. Um, now I've kind of like found a bunch of people that are playing pickleball in the community that I wasn't playing before, but, you know, like, why not, you know, and then going to the gym and creating new relationships. I went golfing for the first time in a while with a guy I met there. And so just kind of, you know, doing as much of that as possible. There's a lot of great like uh, nature, uh, like biking and hiking trails where we're at. And so just kind of trying to keep that up as much as possible. And then um, still seek out like going to the farmer's market, shopping locally as much as possible. And all those um, things have been pretty well integrated into our, our lifestyle now. Nice. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned your business. You mind talking a, a little bit about that? Um how it how it came to be where it's at what what the focus is with it yeah happy to so life fuel we are a plant-based nutrition and wellness company we've got both a line of physical uh nutrition products and a digital wellness program my wife is a certified holistic uh wellness coach and a culinary nutritionist my background in professional athletics and then uh having worked on like the medical side of nutrition and continue to advance my education around kind of functional wellness and nutrition. It's kind of like what's culminated at the start of uh, Life Fuel. Um, I think for me, it was a combination of kind of, you know, being 
in a, a professional athlete, you know, nutrition, I knew was always a powerful lever to kind of pull, which was often ignored by other athletes. So it can be used as a, a competitive advantage. And if you're not looking at nutrition, you're, you know, leaving something on the table. I don't care if you're performing, you know, like to the moon, you know, there's still something that's not optimized. And whether that's, you know, through athletics or even entrepreneurship, if you don't have kind of a, a nutrition strategy in place, like it's just impossible to perform at your best and to have energy and all these different things where they need to be. So life fuel, um, you know, was a drive from that professional experience and then later kind of seeing the need in American society for a more complete solution to daily nutrition because our food landscape has changed so much. Um, so even like fresh fruits and vegetables aren't as nutrient rich as they were, you know, decades ago, by the time they end up on a supermarket shelf, they've lost the majority of the nutritional value in them. And so if you look at um, research, it's, you know, 95% or more of Americans are insufficient in one or more essential vitamins and nutrients um, due to kind of this changing landscape of wellness. Nobody enjoys taking 10 different supplements throughout the day. A lot of us forget to pop the pill in the morning and the evening and, you know, Half the time, you don't even know if they're effective or doing anything for you to begin with. So I was never like a big uh, believer in taking all these supplements, but like getting the underlying essential nutrition is so fundamental to overall health. And so that's really what we, that's the problem we sought out to fix at, at Life Fuel. So the first physical product that we created was an all-in-one essential shake, looking at functional nutrition guidelines and those key nutrients that are largely lacking or missing in modern diets. Most of us are getting plenty of like vitamin C, B vitamins and other things, but we're not getting enough magnesium, D3, K2, iodine, boron, choline, some of those harder to get nutrients. And that's compounded if you're on any type of specialty diet, whether that's vegan, keto, carnivore, don't care, like, you know, Anytime you start to restrict entire food groups, it's going to um, compound like that nutritional insufficiency or deficiency uh, paradigm. So, yeah, that was kind of the initial, you know, starting point uh, for life fuel. But always from the beginning, it wasn't about just physical products. It's really about uh, transforming lives. And so we've had our digital wellness program, which we've continued to evolve and, and invest resources in. Over time, we're now making kind of a, a more concerted effort and investment into kind of reimagining that program, uh, having like an accountability coach and kind of using a lot of these learnings uh, from the past few years of living, traveling abroad in infusing them and making that easier for people to kind of adapt their own quote unquote, like blue zones in uh, kind of an urban or uh, American based lifestyle. Awesome. Wow. That's really cool. Um, and I, and I'll, I'll share after our interview, you know, you've, ge you've generously offered a 20% off, um, for listeners, um, we'll share the code with them. I'm curious, um, just for, for the average person, maybe myself included, what would you recommend that first order contains? I'm a, I'll put you on the spot a little bit. Well, yeah, it's well, our essential well, shake. All right, it's our yeah. hero product. I mean, it really depends on where you're at in your health journey. Um, if you already got like, you know, you're dialed in with your, you've got a daily fitness, you know, movement practice, you're pretty, you know, mindful about like where your food and nutrition is coming from. You've got that handled. Then I think the support of like the essential shake is, is probably a great starting point for most people. Um, if you're earlier on in that wellness journey, there's any type of health bottleneck. If you're struggling with sleep or energy or weight, um, you probably get a lot of benefit from our transformation program, um, because that's really going to lay that educational foundation, right? We're going to teach you to fish. We're not just going to give you the fish, right? So teach you how to read nutrition label, kind of reimagine that home and work environment. Um, you know, a lot of that philosophy is around, you know, if you, you know, are buying, you know, the junk to begin with no amount of willpower is going to be enough to kind of withstand like reaching for the junk food when you're having a stressful day, you're depressed, you're, you know, things aren't right. Right. The first thing we go to for is like the, 
bucket of ice cream in the freezer or the Snickers bar, whatever, right? If it's if it's in the home, it's in our mind and we're constantly trying to fight that temptation. Uh, and then there's some advanced things that we're planning on rolling out um, kind of with that dietetics and health coach um, in terms of accountability. We found that the products are obviously great, but sometimes people need, you know, an accountability partner. That's one thing that I definitely learned as an athlete. You know, can't do it all like the coach. The role of the coach was so important to uh, my development as an athlete, being able to kind of uh, get it another set of eyes on you and, and, and learn from like that wealth of knowledge instead of having to go at your own and try to figure it all out. There's no lack of information. All the education out there exists and you can certainly like seek it out on your own. But if you've ever struggled, if you're looking for more support, that's where kind of working with somebody in a small group setting or even one-on-one can be uh, really powerful for a lot of people. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, what's the best way for people to, get in touch with you, follow your work. Yeah, so lifefuel.com, uh, that's life with a Y, L-Y-F-E-F-U-E-L.com. Uh, that's you know where you find everything about the business and all that. Uh, I'm not a big social media uh, person. I think that's partly by living in the blue zones and <laughs> understanding that there's... <laughs> A lot more interesting things to do in life than just sit on a you know phone posting stuff all day long. But um, I, I do have an account. It's at C Mandarino on Instagram. But uh, I'm starting a personal newsletter, which would give people kind of more in depth knowledge around kind of some of these topics and and kind of a behind the scenes look at you know what we're doing at Life Fuel. And that's just going to be at chrismandarino.com. Um, so those are probably the two best places to to stay in touch. Okay. Awesome. Chris Mandarino, thanks so much for being here on the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is great. All right. I want to thank Chris so much for being here with us on the Begin Within Health show and as well, thank him for his generous offer of a discount for you and for me over at lifefuel.com, L-Y-F-E-F-U-E-L.com. Just use the code Begin within when you check out, you can get 20% off. Super awesome gift from Chris and his team for us as part of the Begin Within Health community. So go check that out, lifefuel.com. Use the discount code Begin Within, all one word, in order to claim that 20% discount. Now, four quick takeaways from the lessons that Chris got from life in the blue zones. And as I would usually do whenever we have kind of multiple takeaways or a little bit of a framework for you with multiple pieces, multiple pillars to a um, a structure of health and wellness, I would recommend that you just take a listen as I walk through these briefly. Listen for the one, the one area where you believe you have the ability to receive the most benefit by making the smallest change. This is a concept we call going after the low-hanging fruit, right? The area where you can just just get the most bang for your buck in terms of effort, right? You can get the biggest return, the biggest impact on your life, with the smallest possible change. That's the area that I want you to focus on. So let's dig in. Here are four, four of the big takeaways that I got from my interview with Chris Mandarino. First of all, community. Making community a priority. Isolation is not good for our health. So taking a look at our network, taking a look at our family and friends, taking a look at not just the support we're receiving, but the support that we are giving. As you analyze that area of life, is there some low-hanging fruit there? Some really easy adjustments that you can make in order to benefit more fully from your community. Number two, movement. And we're not talking about, you know, beat your body into submission exercise sessions, intense, crazy, insane workouts. We're talking about ways to incorporate movement into your day. 
ways to get up, ways to move around, ways to walk instead of driving, biking instead of driving, whatever the case may be. Are there some ways that you can incorporate more natural movement into your day, perhaps in addition to or instead of your workout session? Number three, looking at consuming plants as much as possible. Again, we're not talking about good foods and bad foods. We're talking about healthier foods and less healthy foods. The healthier foods tend to be plants, foods from plants. So we're talking, in other words, about fruits and veggies. How might you incorporate more into every single day? Is there some low-hanging fruit or veggies, <laughs> sorry about the pun, in that area where you can make a quick, easy change that's going to have a big result? And then finally, adopting a mindset of calmly accepting rather than trying to eliminate all of life's stresses. What we're talking about here is just taking a look at how we deal with stress. Maybe the area of rest and recovery in our life. We're not trying to just eliminate stressors, but to deal more health, healthfully with them, right? Are there some ways that I can more effectively recover from, from stress, rest and recovery? But are there perhaps also some areas where I can be more proactive about setting myself up to be in a more accepting frame of mind, a more accepting mindset. And we've talked about that before on the show as well. Things like having a, a really um, uh, effective morning routine, right? Building some things into the morning routine that are going to set us up to be in a much more accepting place, for the day, a better frame of mind so that as stressors come, we can, uh, rather than being reactive to them, we can be responsive to them. We can respond in a healthy way rather than an unhealthy way, a way that uh, affects our well-being, both mental and physical. So those are four big takeaways. And again, I would recommend that you take a look at what you might do in order to take one small step forward in one of those areas to get to a healthier place in your own life. Then we can build habits around that one area and continue to move forward. I would love to know what area you are working on, what you're doing to work on that area. If you would, send me a, a direct message on uh, Instagram or whatever social media you choose. You can find me at Nate Slegger. Just message me. Tell me what area. Hey, Nate, I listened to the podcast this week. Thanks so much for it. Here's the area that I'm going to work on. Here's what I'm do, going to do in order to work on it. What you do when you take a step like that is you provide yourself with a little bit of positive accountability. It's accountability to me, sure, but having involved someone else in the, the thing that you want to focus on, you will be much more likely to follow through because you know that someone else is interested. Someone else is, quote unquote, watching you. Someone can check back in on you and see if you've done what you said you were going to do. We take it out of this internal, just my own thoughts and feelings with myself, you know, internal world, and we put it out there and get some social accountability when we take a step like that. So please do it. I, I've asked you to do that before. I thank you for those who have. And if you haven't, feel free to do it. I'm here to support you. I want to see you be successful as you continue to improve your health one day at a time, one step at a time. 
There are resources waiting in the show notes for you. If you haven't checked them out, please do. There's a free ebook. There's a link to our Facebook group with workouts and other resources in that free Facebook group. Please check it out, as well as the link that I mentioned at the outset, beginwithin.fit slash coaching. Our coaching program is open for enrollment right now. We'd love to have you join us and continue to move forward in your health and fitness journey. Thanks again so much for being here with me on the Begin Within Health Show. I will talk with you again very soon. Please keep taking care of yourself.